Good morning. It is a joy to welcome all of you to worship at Second Presbyterian Church in Indianapolis, whether you are joining virtually online or you are present here in the sanctuary this morning. God has called us together and called us to worship. And let me admit that I had a little trouble sleeping last night. I've been so looking forward to this moment, to these people, to this service. This powerful time of worship when we come to God who asks us to bring our whole selves into this time and space. To come to a God who asks us to lay down our burdens, our brokenness at the foot of the cross. A God who teaches that it is faithful to both lament and to dream about a new way. To a God who is all about equipping us for the work of ministry. On this festival Sunday, I invite you into the joy and the hope of this work of ministry that we share. I invite you to partner with Second Church to bring this work to life. If you received your fall spire this week, you know the stories we have to tell, the work we are here to do. We invite you to pick one up on the way out today and share it with a friend or a neighbor. God has called us, God equips us, and God will send us faithfully into the world as God's own people. This morning, I would also like to take a brief moment of recognition on the 20th anniversary of the horrific events of September 11th, 2001. This day was designated as a day of prayer and remembrance in December of that year, a day to honor 2,977 persons killed, establishing moments of silence, reflection, and prayer. All of us who remember the tragic loss of life that day also remember the heroic acts of first responders. We also remember that sense of unity and resolve, prayerful reflection that followed. We remember this spirit of shared identity concern for the common good that provided a powerful response to any whose attacks meant to destroy or divide. Two decades later, as we navigate a civic life beset by multiple crises, I believe we are again longing for that kind of shared identity, that kind of faithful response. The truth is, we have the capacity to make it so. And so today, let us pray for the victims of terrorism and violence here and all around the world. Let us pray and work for the unity and solidarity that characterized our national dialogue in those days. And then let us choose that way of being in community with each other. Let us choose that way of being and building up the body of Christ. We are gathered to worship God. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to welcome the Holy Spirit. 